Okay, today we're going to talk about beads. We're also going to talk about colors, and we're also going to talk about the science of colors in the ocean. You know, our, our objective is to just catch some pompano, but I think the more we learn about the science of colors and how they transmit their colors in the ocean can help us catch more fish. You know, for years and years, my dad made pompano rigs and his number one favorite bead was that red bead. And I wondered why, and uh, I think we can help explain some of the logic behind the red bead being one of the most popular. The, uh, the ocean has a uh, ability to show colors up to certain depths. Now, if you look at this chart without getting too techy on you, basically it's showing you the different colors and their wavelengths, okay? And the bottom line here is, is that certain wavelengths have more ability to show their color in deeper water, okay? Now, that red bead we were talking about, that's a real long wavelength color. And you can see here that on a clear day, uh, according to this graph, you know, you're going to almost lose your ability to show red at maybe 20 meters deep. Well, that depends too. You know, what if your water isn't perfectly clear? Or what if it's a cloudy day and you don't have that much sun coming through the water? Well, heck, that, that red might uh, only be visible to fish especially Mr. Pompano, at, uh, at five meters. So a lot of, uh, there's a lot of science behind what color we use to attract fish. Uh, you can see here some will go a lot deeper, yellow and greens, and uh, the blues probably will show color the most, but we also have some other considerations if we want to catch pompano. We have to try to make a color represent uh, a natural food source for Mr. Pompano. So how do we do that? Well, we try to figure out, you know, what does he eat? You know, my uh, nephew Chris, he is a firm believer in matching his beads to the color of the coquina shells that are on the beaches he's fishing on. You know, if he's if he's fishing a beach and there's a lot of pink coquinas or or yellow or, or blue, well, that's what he's going to use, and he's had extremely good luck with that. Uh, he also uh, takes advantage of a few other things besides just color, and and that's glow in the dark, and uh, we'll discuss that a little bit later, uh, but. Anyways, here's, here's one thing that Mr. Pompano just loves to eat, you know, coquina shells. So, so we need to try to match our colors to what's on the beach where you're fishing. The, uh, the other thing that uh, is uh, favorite on uh, the diet of a Pompano is the mole crab, you know, otherwise known as uh, sand flea. And maybe the reason that red bead was popular for so long was it closely resembled the eggs on the bottom side of a, a sand flea. And who knows, you know, maybe there weren't that many orange beads. To me personally, I think an orange bead would be better, but you never know. Depending on the light and the water and the conditions, maybe that red bead doesn't appear red at certain depths, but... Uh, anyways, a red or an orange bead, I think it'd be a good choice. And the other thing we have to look at, too, on this mole crab is uh, look at the uh, colors of the crab itself. You know, this is almost a, uh, a pinkish tan color. And uh, it's important to do that because, you know, the, there's uh, only a couple of ways we can get those pompano to, to go after our bait. And that's sight and that's smell. And he's going to take care of the smell of it, that's for sure. But what if we're using artificial bait? You know, we, we, need, to, uh, we need to have uh, sight, 
uh, maybe uh, override smell more just to get them in the area to think maybe it's a, a sand flea that's uh, swimming in the water. So, um, so that's maybe that maybe that's why that red bead was so popular. But I think there are more choices out there that are a little more scientific that might help us catch more. Uh, so, so here's an orange bead. Now that looks more like the, you know, that mole crab's eggs to me. And uh, I was talking about my uh, nephew, Chris. He uses these. Uh, these are uh, made by troutbeads.com, and they're also sold on uh, Amazon. I'm going to give you a few links in the information section of the video so you can check them out and buy some if you want. But the beauty of these are is they come in different sizes, different millimeters. And, uh, you know, just to give you a ballpark, a... Uh, I think a 12 millimeter is uh, somewhere around a half an inch, you know, so that's probably a good size. We, we want to try to um, maybe match the environment. I know Chris uses a little smaller one sometimes, depending on the size of the coquina shells, but these are also glow in the dark. So we have more of an advantage because even if the water is a little bit dirty, which is perfect for Mr. Pompano, or it's a little bit cloudy, now... We're going to have these, you know, emitting more color than any other standard uh, uh, eight millimeter faceted bead that the old guys used to use. So uh, I am a firm believer that these glow in the darks, if they're used properly, are going to catch you more fish. Now, if the fish aren't on the bite, I don't care what you put down there. You know, uh, they're just not going to bite anything. If you, if you go to the fish gum channel, you're going to see that sometimes the fish just aren't on the bite and they'll go right past the bait. You know, um, he's got some excellent videos showing that. Uh, so I think glow in the dark is a, is a good solution. The other thing you want to worry about too, and, and you can see this also at the fish gum channel, is you can see how the pompano are swimming a little bit higher in the water column. So what's that mean to us? Well, you know, a, a lot of these beads, you know, I did some experimentation uh, with not only these, but the red faceted beads, and uh, they don't float. They just don't float. Uh, so, well, we, we want to try to get those, uh, those beads and that bait higher in the water column. So, depending on how we make our pompano rig, I, I would think it would be almost necessary to make sure that along with that bead, you've got a float. Now, here's some nice, uh, and keep in mind, you know, I've got this video here that shows you how you can make these pompano rig floats on my uh, YouTube channel for uh, pennies on the dollar. Uh, and and here's, a, here's a pink float here. And I'll bet you if you were to match that with maybe an orange glow-in-the-dark bead on your pompano rigs, that's going to represent... Uh, what a uh, what a sand flea is going to look like the pinkish body with a little bit of orange down there so you know you have to take advantage of everything uh, that you can to try to trick these pompano into thinking your bait is a sand flea if uh, if you're not using sand fleas now a lot of times uh, you know I'm using uh, fish bites and I know Tony at the fish comb channel is really close to uh, getting his um, his palm juice done, but it's always a good idea to uh, to make sure that you try to tip your baits with a little bit of live bait, whether it's clam, shrimp, or uh, even cooked sand fleas, just to emit some smell, just to give yourself all the advantages. So, so, so that's it. You know, I mean, uh, you can uh, you can go and get these beads uh, at a few different places, uh, and, and you know, while we're talking about colors. You know, you might say to yourself, well, hey, you know, can fish even see colors? And yes, they can. Most ocean fish can see colors. If you were to Google it, you know, you can see that this uh, this genetic scientist uh, at Washington State says, yeah, they can see it. And depending on, you know, how much light is available, what we were talking about earlier, uh, they have a hard time distinguishing if there isn't a lot of uh, light or the water isn't clear. So they can definitely see colors. And uh, if you want to learn more about uh, light and the ocean, 
Uh, I got that chart from this website here, and I'll, I'll give you all this in the information section of the video. Very interesting read uh, that talks about uh, lights and spectrums and the uh, the troutbead.com site. If you go there and just uh, look at their, uh, you know, if you go to shop and look at all products and look at their glow beads, uh, they, they've got a great selection and they've got a, a lot of different colors. So, uh, you know, it's, uh, and you got different sizes too. You know, I stick with the bigger sizes, but uh, I know Chris, he likes to go with some of the smaller ones. I fished right next to him and and some days he's just pounding the heck out of the pompano. So some days they want different things. You gotta you gotta change it up a little bit. But uh, the uh, the other place that I I like to go to get uh, glow in the dark is I'll go to Jean's Netcraft to get my glow in the darks. Now also get my um, faceted uh, you know eight millimeter faceted here the the red ones because I still like using those. Uh, one of my dad's favorites and one of my favorites. Uh, in conjunction with the floats that you can make yourself. So uh, that's it. You know, I I hope that you've learned something about colors and colors in the ocean and what choices we can make to catch more pompano. And that's what it's all about. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and don't forget to hit that bell for reminders and new videos. And that'll do it for this video.